the brush mask is the most versatile of the masking tools and it's great for generating masks in itself and also is essential for fixing up other masks generated by other means. Now to create a mask for this dog I'm going to use the soft brushes for the back and the furry bits and hard brushes on for the sharper areas. So we start with a soft, soft brush, fairly large, but not too large. Start from the center. For going along the edge, it's best that 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 brush is a little too small, and now I seem to have gone perhaps a little bit too far. So I'll erase that bit and then start again. So when you're not too sure of the size of your brush, because you cannot see the brush size, it's best to work from the inside towards the edge gradually till you find the edge and then slide the brush along the edge as you can see that happening at the moment. Sometimes you'll find you get a little bit of a a, a sort of nick or a dip in your edge and that you'll have to fill in later Yes, there's a little dip being filled in. Now there's a, a hard area there which I'm going to leave out for the moment. I'm going to return when I'm using the harder brush. And we'll now move over to the right hand side. And it will very soon be time to change to the harder brush and go round the head area. When doing a mask, the important thing is to avoid going outside the outline that you're trying to, of the object that you're trying to mask. You can keep within it quite safely because the person viewing the image has no idea, even if you're leaving out a little edge along the side. As long as you're getting fairly close, you're going to get a good result. But if you do go over the edge, then you'll have to erase to, to go back and you see there we, we're, there's a little bit there that's going to have to be erased at the corner of the ear. I'm, there we are. We've tightened that in and we're back on to the painting tool. It's a little bit uncertain where the outline is here, so I think I'm going to drop the opacity of the gradient so I can see more clearly in a moment. There we are, drop the opacity so I can see the outline of the dog's head more clearly.
I am doing this fairly rapidly. I'm trying to not to make this tutorial an epic if I can avoid it, but um, what has to be done has to be done. I'm using an Apple Pencil for this and sometimes when you tap on tools um, it doesn't, it doesn't, there we are, it doesn't immediately go, <laughs> happen so you have to change back and um, it doesn't seem to register and I think this happens again further on down. quite quite infuriating when you've made a mistake and, and you go to fix it and you make things worse again but anyway that's the joys of masking mouth and further on down the neck. I think we've gone a wee bit far out. Oh, again we failed to hit the <laughs> raise button. haven't forgotten the left of the collar, the, le the left hand side, there's a little bit of finishing to do there. There's a little bit of fur sticking out from beyond the collar there. And then changing to the soft brush again because there's a few bits just beside the collar that need to be finished off. Now I'm not going to apply this gradient, I'm going to export the, the, the mask, in fact I'm removing it. And I'm just checking, I've just got the, the, the one layer, the dog, and I'm going to now blend in the, the, the mask to have a look at it and do some adjustments to it. You can see there's a few little patches that have been missed. You, you, it's in, virtually impossible to see them when they're small like that, when you're actually doing the mask. So go back into the gradient and bring out the brush mark and invert it and then um, paint out those bits. And there's a little um, light bit that along the back that's going to have to be removed um, and I've still got the other mask in place. I will remove that and then invert and paint out the bit on the back. while I was doing this I missed a little um, a little smudge <laughs> a little grey smudge in the, down at the bottom right and I get rid of it later so with my shaky hand I, I like to smooth out my mask I, I usually give a couple of applications of flow and a coherence now Sometimes when there's very sharp little detailed areas, 
that needs to be done carefully, but not in this case, because they, on the, this is where I get rid of the little grey smudge. Just bring up the the um, levels and pull in the the right sign. It gets rid of the the thing, and then a, a blur to to finish off the the edges of the the mask so that there's no harsh transitions anywhere. Now we just hop back to the, the base layer and import the mask. And I mistakenly invert it here <laughs> because I, it's the background I'm going to do it. Well, it just it gives them a chance to have a look at how much of the dog I've cut out. So there we are, we will make a nice uh, green background so that the dog can be imported using effects chroma. There's a little dark area at the bottom of the back that I'm going to, to mask out before saving. I'll just paint that out. You always have to be alert for little details like this. save it eventually. I just wanted to have a, a quick look at it before saving it. Um, it doesn't do to save something from a close-up view. Um, so here's a background and we'll go to chroma. Select our green background dog and there it is and it can be moved around and resized uh, at will. And there we are. I hope you find this a helpful tutorial if you're a beginner.